Pan the people, what up? Happy Halloween. We got your trick, which is our quarterback situation, and our treat, which is our two young stud wide receivers. Going on and watching Panthers post well today for Halloween. I'm going to be a struggling slash slowly or quickly dying Carolina Panthers fan. Uh, what's it going to look like? Bryce Young jersey. And then I'm just going to make my face look like a zombie. Talk about a couple things. Number one, um, Deontay Johnson. He's a Baltimore Raven now. Uh, according to Mike K., this compensation talk uh, in terms of the comp pick that the Panthers could have gotten if they just stuck with Deontay Johnson, who would have been no doubt pouting the rest of the year, probably would not have happened. So in essence, he would have been leaving for nothing. So the best that they could have done was what the Ravens gave them, and that is a fifth round pick. So they jump up, depending on how the Ravens do, just a couple of draft spots. But I guess the way it is is, you were, he was going to leave with nothing, for absolutely nothing, kind of like Frankie Louvu. And you got to get something. You got to get a party favor of some kind. And apparently the Baltimore Ravens were the last team to get involved in this, and that was the best uh, offer that they that they that the Panthers received. And so they had to do something. Who knew what the other ones were like? You had guys like uh, DeAndre Hopkins uh, getting traded for, you know, a fourth-round pick, a fifth-round pick. Like, not the, no one was getting second third round picks for their wide receivers. It just wasn't happening. But right now the Panthers are, you know, they're they're the crap team and everyone knows they're sellers. Everyone knows that they're kind of desperate, that nobody wants to play here right now so they can lowball us left, right, and center. I don't know who they can get rid of right now to get anything better than a fifth round pick. They say that JC Horn's not available. They say that Chuba Hubbard is not available. Bryce Young, I personally don't think that he's going to leave because he's starting, we're going to talk about that, this Sunday. The trade deadline is the Wednesday after, depending how he does. He might be a Carolina Panther or not. Just focus on Deontay Johnson right now. He didn't want to be here. Unfortunate because I think if the quarterback play was better, he would want to be here. Why not? He'd be the number one guy. Whereas in Baltimore, he's like the number four guy. Like I think Isaiah likely is still going to get, at this point going forward, still probably going to get more catches, more yards, more touchdowns than Deontay Johnson because A, he's a new guy. B, he's like fourth in the depth chart right now. So I think he's trying to win a, a ring. He's not trying to you know, meddle with a developing quarterback or a bridge quarterback right now, despite the fact that he was the number one wide receiver and, you know, could have maybe get paid, signed, but unfortunate because if the quarterback situation is more stable here, which we all thought would have been a thing, a reality that Bryce Young maybe takes that bump in the second year, but it's just not happening. So this is what happens. The only major pick piece that could be traded is Bryce Young. So let's get to that. He's starting. Andy Dalton, uh, Dave Canal says that he's going to be they're being overly cautious with Andy Dalton's uh, throwing thump because if he is a starter going forward after this week in the Saints, if he's going to do his thing out in Germany against the Giants, you don't want to re-aggravate it. And then if you do end up trading Bryce, it's it's the Jack Plummer show and then nobody wants to watch that. So Bryce Young, uh, if he when he does start against the Saints, a beat-up Saints, Derek Carr apparently set to start. He's feeling pretty good about that. So you can go in two different directions. Do you continue to build on Bryce? And continue to build on that confidence and hope that he could be a franchise quarterback in the future. And he's taking a longer term, longer road to being a legitimate starting quarterback. Or you use that good film as some kind of a updated resume slash leverage to a team that is hungry for a quarterback. And you trade him off for, I'm hoping, no less than a third. But I feel like the Panthers would almost have to give up that fifth round pick they just got from the Ravens and Bryce Young to maybe get something like a third round pick and maybe like a, a a linebacker that they don't like. I don't know. I could see either of those happening. The way Dave Canal speaks about Bryce Young is as if he is the backup um, and that Andy Dalton is the guy. Like they're trying to keep, they're trying to preserve Andy Dalton's future here, his arm, his hand, his thumb specifically, because you don't want to get him hurt long-term because you almost need him long-term. That's, that's what I'm, reading between the lines here and that Bryce is like the backup and like, you know, we love Bryce. We love that he's getting these reps, but we're not really wanting our backup to be running our franchise here, here going forward. So the way they're talking about Bryce is if, as if he is the backup and he has not longed for a long career with the Panthers, as long as Dave Canales is the head coach. If he rebounds personally, what's the harm in having a guy on a rookie contract back next year as the bridge? Sure, he's a very highly paid bridge quarterback, relatively speaking, because I, I don't know what Andy Dalton would be getting if you were to extend him by a year. But what, what's the problem? Like, But if, if Dave Connell has no 
real confidence that he's going to be here long term and that Andy Dalton is going to be the true bridge. And then they build the team around Andy. And maybe in 2026, you, you draft your quarterback, your guy in a much, hopefully, better situation. Um, I, that that does seem cleaner, in my opinion. If you can get rid of Bryce after the, if he plays well, hopefully he plays well in this game, and then you you flip him for a third and another player or something like that, and you might 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 have to get rid of that other fifth that you got from the Baltimore Ravens, and then you go into next year with a veteran quarterback, veteran presence, and then you continue to build around him. I I think that does seem a little bit cleaner now. Saying it out loud, now what would you guys do with Bryce? Would, would you keep him or would you let Andy Dalton be the bridge? The quarterback talk is getting old. Like I I, I it's, it's it's tough on the soul. Right now, like I look at my Bryce Young jersey and I'm upset. I'm upset because there's no way that I thought a first overall pick Heisman Trophy winner would be gone after less than two years, potentially. But here we are. So I'm focusing on other things. Again, this is a team sport. This is a team sport. And then there's really not, not really too much to ride home about mother defense. There's a couple guys out there. But the thing that I think the Panthers, even social media knows that to get butts into seats, to get people excited, maybe even purchasing a jersey is about these young guys on this team. You got Chuba, who's going to get paid, I think, with the Panthers. You got J.C. Horn. So these guys are some of the older young guys. But then you got Jonathan Brooks, who is still yet to be determined what how he's going to contribute to this team. Jatavion Sanders, who is, you know, he has his moments as a receiving tight end, no doubt. He's still got to work on the blocking. But then you got Xavier Leggett and Jalen Coker. Two completely different type of wide receivers in terms of how they got here to the league. You got... Xavier Leggett played in the SEC in South Carolina, drafted in the first round, and then you got Jalen Coker played at Holy Cross. I think that's, is that D1AA? I'm not sure. And he was an undrafted free agent. I think he was guaranteed $200,000 on me to play with the Carolina Panthers. But both are about the same weight. I think Jalen Coker's 6'3", 212, and then uh, Xavier Leggett is 6'3", 225, but built completely different. Um, as you probably saw in some of those clips in the locker room, he doesn't need seafood barely eats vegetables the man is all about chicken beef i think he just started eating string peas and some pasta you get a physique like that i guess through pasta and beef i'll take it um but they really are the silver lining on this season that we are seeing at least on the skill position player wise you know double trouble going on right now in terms of the wide receivers and they are giving defenses a little bit of something to think about now uh in terms of coverages you know, Xavier Leggett it has three touchdowns right now on the year. I think that is uh, third place, tied with third place. Uh, some of the rookie wide receivers out there. Jalen Coker making really good catches on the sideline. He got his first touchdown in garbage time against the Broncos. Another, So you have two big body wide receivers, 6'3", 210 plus for both. One is a physical freak in Xavier Leggett who manhandled uh, the cornerback out of Denver. Patrick Sertan for his third touchdown on the year for that first touchdown on that opening drive that where Bryce looks so promising. And then you got Jalen Coker, who is, as, as, as Steve Smith says, he's Tim Duncan. He's Mr. Fundamental. He does everything right. He runs his routes right. He catches right. He's got good hands. And I think that that is a building block for this team. It probably helped them get rid of Deontay even more, like depending on what he was in the locker room. I'm sure he was fine. But doing some self-scouting, seeing that, hey, we got this guy, Jalen Coker, who we, we got him locked down for $200,000 a year, and we got Xavier Leggett, who is showing a lot of promise, like a lot more compared to what we saw out of Terrace Marshall, a lot more than we saw out of Jonathan Mingo, that we got these two guys who we can build on and continue to coach up and develop, and, you know, having, well, I, I'm very interested to see how they do once Andy Dalton does come back, if Bryce is traded or benched again when Andy Dalton's thumb is feeling better. I'd be very interested to see how both of those guys do with a veteran quarterback who can find them in that third read or maybe look over the line and find them in that first read and get them the ball with proper mechanics, proper throw throw them open. Not saying that Bryce wasn't doing that last game because uh, there were a couple times where even Xavier Liga should have caught that ball, but the sun got in his eyes, one on the sideline as well. But it'd be very interesting to see how two rookies do when a veteran is throwing them the quarter, throwing them the ball because now, right now, Adam Thielen is not completely healthy. Dante Johnson's not on the team anymore. So it's going to be those two guys. And so I feel like that their growth will only accelerate when you have a veteran quarterback in there or if Bryce stays on the team and he gains confidence and he finds the ball as well. Um, But I'm excited about these two guys. I really am. Like that's, you want to talk about what made Bryce Young's rookie season so bad is because there was no weapons around him besides Adam Thielen who had a great season. But if you continue to develop these guys this year for the rest of the year, if that's the focus now, because if you have Andy Dalton in, you don't have to develop Andy Dalton anymore. 
you develop these wide receivers, and then next year they get another year under their belt. And then, as you take a look at the Twitter machine, which I'm sure you guys do, uh, Jaden Reed, or Jay Reed, out of uh, ESPN, had a nice little back and forth with Aaron, with Unnecessary Bluntness, talking about, you know, are the Panthers in a position where they have to take a quarterback with that first overall pick, which we are right now, Jordan Reed, excuse me. He said he's a fan of trading back, getting best player available, and then 2026 being in a much better position to take a rookie quarterback. And I think that would be the best situation where you have a bridge quarterback, whether it's Andy Dalton, used next year as another development year for these two rookie quarterbacks who will be have another full year of NFL football under their belts, plus another rookie wide receiver who I totally expect in the draft at some point. And then when they're in their third year, you think they start to really hit their stride, and then you plop in that rookie quarterback and you got these two large ones, a physical freak, one's an expert route runner type. I'm just saying that's their superpowers. Not saying either one are, aren't strong. The other one is not a good route runner. But you're going to have a more polished wide receivers on either side of you, plus Jatavion Sanders, plus Jonathan Brooks. You never know. Maybe it becomes a better situation. We're not this toxic franchise anymore. We're a horrible place to be to, you know, to put your young son to be a quarterback. I'm excited about these wide receivers. Let me know. Are you excited about Jalen Coker and Xavier Legan? And if you were to spend your hard-earned money would you spend money on a number 18 or number 17 jersey? Let me know. I'm not saying I'm buying anything. But if you were to invest, I think it kind of makes sense. Like, uh, it seems, especially when you get an undrafted free agent type, you know they're going to work hard. They're not going to take anything for granted. They're in a spot that literally 32 teams passed them over, over seven rounds, over 220 picks. Nobody picked friggin' Jalen Coker. But the Panthers were serious cokeheads, and and they paid him two hundred thousand dollars guaranteed for him to play for them, and he's got to return the favor by playing well. And I think he's gonna be. I think he is doing that right now. He's making them look smart. Let me know, Coker, Leggett, what you think about Bryce? What you think about Sunday? I'll have the recap. See you guys soon.